From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Victor Beatty reporting. Nigerians have a new president-elect following historic elections. Nigerian President-elect Mohamedou Buhari says his election victory means the country has embraced democracy and has put one-party rule behind it. Wednesday, he was officially declared winner of Saturday's ballot, defeating incumbent Good Luck Jonathan by more than 2.5 million votes. Mr. Jonathan conceded defeat Tuesday in what's the West African country's first civilian transfer of power from one party to another. Lai Mohammed is a spokesman for Mr. Buhari's All Progressives Congress Party. We are all happy because we are witnessing history. History in the sense that this is the first time in Nigeria that a uh, sitting government would be voted out of power using purely democratic means. Uh, before now, when uh, Governments are not popular. They either sit tight or they are removed by the military. The 72-year-old Mr. Buhari, previously a military ruler in the 1980s, who after 20 months was himself ousted in the coup, is to be inaugurated May 29th. China is urging negotiators in the Iran nuclear talks to compromise to finalize a framework agreement as those talks resume Wednesday. Russia's foreign minister said the two sides have agreed in principle on key elements of a deal. A U.S. postperson says several difficult issues remain. Iran's foreign minister, Mohammad Javad Zarif, sounded upbeat after Tuesday's marathon session. We have accomplished quite a bit, uh, but people needed to get some rest and start over uh, early in the morning and hopefully start the process of drafting tomorrow. Diplomats say differences remain on such matters as restricting uranium enrichment research, sanctions, and what to do if Iran violates the agreement. This is VOA News. German airline Lufthansa Tuesday said the co-pilot who deliberately crashed a jetliner into the French Alps told his flight school back in 2009 he had had a serious depressive episode. The carrier says the co-pilot, Andreas Lubitz, sent the note to its flight school when he resumed instruction following an interruption. Lufthansa, owner of the budget carrier German Wings that was involved in the March 24 crash that killed all 150 people on board, sent the note to investigators. French prosecutors say Lubitz had suicidal tendencies but appeared to be stable at the time of the crash in a remote part of southeast France. The president of the European Council, Polish diplomat Donald Tusk, on Tuesday said the European Union is prepared to support Tunisia in its fight against extremists. I commend the Tunisian people in your commitment to democracy and we assure you that the European Union will be next to you every step of the way. The EU and Tunisian authorities are discussing how we can further our cooperation in concrete terms to ensure the safety and security of all our people. Mr. Tusk speaking in Tunis where he met Prime Minister Habib Assid and toured the National Bardo Museum, scene of a March 18th attack by terrorists that killed 21 people, most of them foreign tourists. A key trial in the 2010 bombings in Kampala that killed nearly 80 people has been interrupted following the killing of the chief Ugandan prosecutor who gunned down by assailants this week, who followed her car on a motorbike, the identity of the gunman who killed Joan Kagezi, and their motive remains a mystery. The Somali-based militant group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the 2010 bombings that targeted packed sports bars as fans watched World Cup action. The leader of the Islamist-backed government in Tripoli, Omar al Hassi, has been sacked by parliament. He was appointed back in August, but lawmakers in the General National Congress challenged his leadership and demanded his departure amid allegations of misleading comments 
exaggerating government revenues and inability to pay salaries. Iraqi forces continue battling Islamic State fighters in the city of Tikrit Wednesday in a bid to finish their weeks-long effort to retake the area that militants have controlled since June. The Iraqi interior minister said troops were working to clear the last remaining pockets of Islamic State militants. The government of Myanmar and representatives of 16 major ethnic rebel groups signed a draft ceasefire agreement Tuesday that all sides hope will end decades of fighting. President Thane Sein said it's the first step toward a political dialogue with rebel groups. UN Special Advisor Vijay Nambiar called the deal historic and a significant achievement. Myanmar, known as Burma, has seen more than 65 years of clashes between government and rebel groups. I'm Victor Beatty, VOA News. That's the latest world news from VOA.